Hey guys, this is Steph Barker again with Tom Tom Magazine, and this is a little bit of week two at the Drummers Collective in New York City. And uh, I'm in one of the practice rooms right now. I'm just gonna do some stuff before one of my classes, and I just kind of wanted to give you a closer look at what one of the practice rooms would look like. So. <clears throat> There's soundproofing, there's a clock in every practice room. The walls are all soundproof. They're actually going through some construction right now to soundproof it even further um, so that it's really like, I can hear a little bit from the people next door, but like when you're playing and you're doing your own thing, these rooms uh, have been great so far for me. Um, all the rooms have like top-notch equipment. I was talking about it before for a second, but it's really, really good quality stuff. There's a lot of sonar kits in here. They have Tamaha, they have, I mean, they have Tama, they have Yamaha. Um, this is a Mapex kit right now. So it's not just like one standard drum set that they use or whatever. It's all, you know, different things. And it's all very good quality. Um, the little like preview that I showed you guys like of walking through I kinda zoomed in on some like logos that's because the um, Evans uh, like A&R department is gonna be moving into this building as well all uh, Evans heads are on mostly all these drums that's I think all of them actually but symbols range too from Zildjian, Sabian, Pisces, whatever you can think of but just an example like this is quality equipment that's in here this is an HHX evolution crash do you know how expensive these crash symbols are very expensive and a vault Sabian um, three-point ride and then also the fierce hats from the vault Sabian like great great sounding equipment in the practice rooms for everyone to use and it's really important and fun to be able to play on you're like oh wow I can actually play on this stuff and see what it sounds like like these hi-hats I've been having like the time of my life because they're really nice to play on um, I'm gonna be coming back with you guys in a second to show you just some quick technique stuff that I learned um, the second week and I did get a chance to have a lesson with Camille it was great and I think next recap I'll have a video interview with her as well as another instructor, Jason. So uh, let's do some technique. This week it was the same classes but we were more actually applying things that we learned to the drum set and playing more and kind of like each person would play and then get like feedback from the teachers and then the next person would play so it was kind of like everyone was watching everyone do their thing and that was cool because you could hear feedback about everything. Um, I had my lesson with Camille Gaynor, and it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. She was great. I'm going to be getting an interview with her next week and uh, with one of the other teachers there as well. So next week will be more video um, actually at the collective and talking to some people. This week my is going to just be me, so I'm sorry if that's boring. But I'm at least going to show you some cool technique stuff that we've been talking about. And this is stuff that you can start like right away and um, just anytime you don't need a drum room for it you just need a practice pad. One of the things that we are working on is just specifically separating like using fingers and then isolating to use just wrist when you're going over exercises and then this one looks a little bit funny just using arm to do certain exercises. So, um, one of the examples, it's a little bit weird that you can't see me. Um, so if you have the book Stick Control, this is one of the books that we were using, and like one of the first exercises in this book, it's just one measure of eighth notes, and I think it's, it's just alternating sticks is like the first one, so it's like, one and two and three and four and and then it's sticking is right left right left right left right left so what we would do is go through each of those exercises once like with using the finger technique 
those aren't like techniques of playing. It's just how to build up your finger muscles, how to build up your wrists, and how to build up your arms as an overall approach. Like you would never want to just be like, I'm going to play now and just only do this or only do this. You know what I mean? So it's just a way to build up all the muscles in your hand so that you can actually just strengthen that as an overall scope. So um, what we're going to do right now is I'm just going to do like a measure of right hand, a measure of left hand, and then for example alternating because I think that's the first example in that book, stick control. So when you want to do the finger set up specifically, um, you almost put your hands over like in a French grip style. Again, you wouldn't play like this normally. I've, some people play French style, but this is strictly for like this exercise of just just really focusing on your fingers. So you want to make sure your wrists are not moving. They're not invited to this party at all. It's just your fingers. And one of the things you want to do, just practice with one stick at a time, is really let the stick do the work and you want to have it have a nice full stroke. See how it's like all coming back to my chest basically? Like a full stroke. You want it to go nice, like straight up and down and try to hit the same spot on the pad. But again, you don't want to use your wrist. And then try it with just your left hand. And this might be a little bit harder because if you're a righty, then your left hand is definitely, you'll, you'll feel the difference immediately. But, and I definitely still have to watch myself too, just make sure your wrists are not moving. You just want it to hit the pad, get a nice, nice stroke, a nice full stroke. And then you can do them both at the same time. And then you can alternate like that first example. And what you really want to do is also put on your metronome and, and do this to a steady um, clip. So the next thing focuses more on wrist. You, you're flipping back over to more of a German style grip. And now you don't want your arms to move, and you really don't want your fingers to move at all. You're just, it's very, it reminds me of marching. I used to um, do a lot of marching percussion, and it's a lot of wrist movement there. So basically you're isolating your wrist, and it might look weird, it might feel weird, but it's just to make sure you can strengthen your wrist. So it's like right, left, alternate. And stick control has a lot of other exercises. Uh, yeah, a lot of other exercises. You know, one of the one of the exercises is you're you're sticking like a paradiddle, so it'd be like right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, and you go down the whole page. You know, doing that, and then you can just do each hand individually in eighth notes, and it works out. Um, so the last one is the arms that look a little bit weird because you don't want to use your wrist or your fingers. So you're literally picking up your arm and you kind of look like a crazy like robot person. Like, meh, meh, meh. I don't know why like that sound happens if you're a crazy robot person, but I think it does. So that's basically what you do. And let's do it in an example. So right, 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 left, 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 alternate. And it's meant to look awkward. So let's say if you put all these together. Start with fingers. We're going to do rights, lefts, alternate, go immediately to wrists, right, left, alternate, and then arms, right, left, alternate. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alternate. Wrist. Left. Alternate. Arms. Left. All right, so that's kind of a rundown of some stuff that you guys can do. Um, I would suggest getting stick control. You can run through those exercises. You'd want to do it for way longer than that, not just a measure and then switch. Like, you you know, set it up to do it longer so you can really focus on what individual muscle you want to work on. And I'll be back next week with um, some interviews, so keep checking in. This is Steph Barker with TomTom Tom Magazine. I will see you soon.